welcome friends uh, which are joining us on this webinar and also our friends which are joining us in the FRO uh, summit uh, because this has been actually telecast at both levels and uh, so welcome if you are part of the FRO summit you are welcome and also people who are just joining our regular uh, series this is a series which we do every uh, Saturday uh, where we talk about uh, you know uh, you know how can you really plan yourself I mean we divide this into four parts uh, we talk about how to value your business how to uh, scale your business how to invest and we also talk about exit exit is becoming more and more important i think last 10 years we've heard a lot of good stories of uh, founders finding a profitable exit and so forth so we'll talk exit in general and today's session would be really in the next 30 minutes i'll give you a perspective of what needs to be done if you're really planning to do an exit of your business uh, these are difficult times these are challenging times and these are times where a lot of businesses which were very different at pre-covid are now very different you know and a lot of people who are looking uh, the call of exit at this stage are not necessarily they were uh, planning that that time pre-covid but in six months it's already six months a lot of things have changed a lot of businesses have changed uh, and people are coming from uh, you know uh, some are really restructuring their portfolio of businesses I mean, seasoned business owners who have multiple businesses running and really looking at way to priority because these times were very unique times you know earlier times you have impact in industries you have impact in territories you have impact in markets and things of that nature happen but this time almost every business got disrupted so a lot of business owners are thinking that you know they might have to consider on some of the core businesses and let go some of the non-core businesses which they're not want to focus on that some are looking for a liquidity call because they are looking for some businesses which can be sold easily and and get liquidity in the business a lot of uh, smart companies really look at that i mean they pick up some cherries assets good assets out of their businesses some businesses and then put it out and a lot of independent businesses which uh, are now for reasons are you know multiple issues are with them they are looking for an exit so we have a platform called business x where we work with multiple businesses especially uh, micro to mid level businesses uh, where we work with them and uh, building their strategies and and uh, business plan when they're looking for an exit so what what we need to really do is that this is a very critical decision for especially for entrepreneurs family business owners uh, when they they are deciding to get into uh, exit of the business and also the timing uh, how what time i should really plan and is it the time to really look at an exit so let's set up some perspective on what is going on in uh, you know why people look at an exit i've uh, seen over meeting a lot of businesses and working with a lot of business owners i found while there are many reasons one you can really do that but five reasons really come very very prominent and let's go each reason each uh, uh, reason in a little bit detail one what i think is most prominent at this moment which is called the financial pressure <laughs> a lot of businesses at a certain level don't able to make uh, uh, understanding these days one unique thing is happening your cash flows are broken so your cash flows are broken your cost is sitting there it means that businesses will need a lot of gestation times to really come out of it and if you were not holding that kind of a treasury or you have ability to raise further on your balance sheet what would you do you know so business is good business is good business is not gone anywhere but it has gone to a position of what i call breaking of equilibrium of your cash flow versus costs uh, which are running there that equilibrium sometimes can break it's nothing unique it happens all the time with companies and companies would then try to use and leverage their balance sheet to bring more debt or or sometimes bring in equity so if these options are not available for these i mean if you're not having the balance sheet so strong that you can raise more debt i think that's a very difficult call and i think some unless and until you are very sure about your your uh, books for next three four years you should not account for more debt uh, because this gestation can be even more longer or otherwise partial sale of business makes much more sense because that would give you comfort and give you the time to ride over that uh, business and business table so first reason i've really realized when people look at uh, selling the business is the financial pressure and pressure is just about uh, imbalance of your cash flow versus cost this is what i think in next six months we'll see some really good assets a lot of good companies would come in just because of the breaking of this equilibrium second which i think is the best way when you really look i want to deal look at asset uh, exit is for profit if you are running good business and i can tell you this can be the perfect time this is a perfect time if your business is still making money you are sitting on a gold mine and if you are sitting on a gold mine you might like to unlock it because a lot of people out there who have cash and they want to really invest into businesses 
but they are looking for a profitable running businesses. If your business model is profit, uh, this is a great time to get a goodwill out of there and, and sell it for profit. So that's the second reason. Always people sell for, for profit. And third is what I also see now is fatigue. Sometimes you reach a business to a certain level and you have no ability to take it to the next level purely because I think the kind of strategic time it requires, the kind of uh, uh, gain the input required, the founder has lost it. Founder is, doesn't have that same ability to really go back to his uh, business and, and start reinventing and right pulling up again. The fatigue has come in. Fatigue sometimes hit organizations at large and sometimes starts with the founder, but it hits entire organization at large. Sometimes the teams, the founding team, the management team, the key people, they all get to a certain level of fatigue that they don't want to really now uh, put their uh, innovation in. With. I think at that time, the organization is fatigued. I see a lot of great organizations at a certain time uh, get very fatigued. And when they get to a new buyer, they reinvent, rejuvenate the business, uh, reinvent their business, rediscover their customer base. So a lot of that has to be done. So a lot of great businesses are always there, which can turn around and people have, we have seen a lot of turnaround stories, great turnaround stories when uh, this was went to a new buyer and new buyer was able to bring in fuel in the new energy, which is required in the business. The third reason I think is fatigue. Uh, you have to ask yourself, is your business hit that fatigue? Is it something which you just surviving, just filling the, you know, things which are part of that, or you're still in the game of scaling up your business. Uh, so that's where I think a lot of good promising businesses get stuck and the entrepreneurs or business owner or family businesses keep running those businesses because they are uh, they dislike their duty and especially when you are a business which has been narrated by your your uh, you know father grandfather then you continue to run that business just because it looks like that i passed somebody passed me some valuable thing and i have, I have to keep it holding and they don't take a reason to exit that business that's also wrong i see a lot of uh, second generation third generation sometimes fourth generation are surviving on those businesses which are not doing well uh, and this business is already fatigued to a certain level, uh, but they're just surviving uh, because uh, uh, they they feel that is an obligation to them as to go and die. I think I think it will be more logical and more sensible for stakeholders, shareholders, for everybody else that business goes to in a better hand and business starts moving ahead of the business. Fourth, which is also now coming, it was not so much of issue in India, but it is globally a biggest issue: succession planning. You know, so you don't have succession. You don't have people to look after your business. Your business has reached to a point where uh, either it has to be uh, given to somebody else because there's nobody who's going to take from your family uh, the business ahead. So a lot of that is also now emerging in India, especially for kids who shift overseas and they want to settle overseas and the parents are running businesses here. So we're seeing all that is now also coming through. We get a calls from, you know, people sitting overseas and get to call our business X team and say, Look, I, my father runs this business and he doesn't want to run anymore. And I don't want to take it over an entire thing. So if you can help us to sell the business. I just recently got a call from Australia, somebody who has a business uh, running uh, way back in India and they want to really sell it. So a lot of that succession issues are coming in. Uh, then we have <clears throat> uh, the final point, which I've seen is that sometimes you come down to a point where uh, the business has come down to almost on liquidation. Uh, and that's very edgy. You know, it's a very a point where uh, it's just about to pull the plug away. And that is a time where you have an urgency to really get something out of the assets which are buying. So that's a very important decision. You need to really don't have to let it go too far that you cannot reverse that decision and it goes into liquidation. So this is one of the areas which needs to be done. The five things which you have seen, financial pressure, for profit, fatigue, succession and uh, liquidation. This is These are the reasons why uh, people would look at uh, selling business. Now, <clears throat> When you really want to sell the business, uh, there are options for you. One option is obviously complete buyout. You know, you sell the complete stock to uh, the, the new buyer and the new buyer runs and operates from there. That also has a lot of legal complications in terms of how you really uh, get that, uh, how you're selling the business and what kind of a structure you create and uh, how the valuation is arrived and so on and so forth. Uh, but it's still, I think, straightforward deal where you sell the complete uh, business. Uh, then the second option is partial sellout, and that to me is very complex. You know, when especially when you are a mid-sized business or small size business, uh, you sell to somebody, and, and somebody who's not very strategically ahead of you and have a big and I think then you have also a lot of risk that future liabilities. How do you hedge your future liabilities on that? How do you really make sure that the business is operationally right and the future value of your stock, which is lying there, uh, is important. 
Third is also in this piece, you need to also understand that who takes an operational control, how much participation you have or would have in the business. So these are important part. If you're selling completely all out, then I think it's much easier to do that. But if you have a partial sellout and you still lose the operational control, then one has to really define what you're sitting on and balance, how you want to get uh, exit out of it and what kind of future value you can see, who's going to be the buyer. And most of the times the buyer himself is the, the same owner who bought the business. And these days, a lot, of that, a lot of that is happening. And I've also seen a lot of other formats which are coming through. We are seeing businesses which are now in trouble time because they run out of cash. They're getting operator partner coming in, putting some small cash for working capital, taking up operational control over the business. So it, these are all serious issues. You know, we need very serious advice on that because sometimes it can go into even more complexity. A new buyer, because he's not attached to the business and not invested enough, uh, might not treat the business or have some other intentions to run the business. So you have to, one has to really see through that. What is their long-term plan? Don't take these short calls. Don't take these short calls just because you want to pass that moment or you want to address that moment. Uh, it has to be taken from a very, very thoughtful process. I always advise that you need to go through a, a professional to do it. So valuation of business is also very, very important. I've done uh, two series in, uh, earlier for how to value your business, what kind of tools you need to use, what kind of formulas we can use. You can visit all that on businessx.com. And in businessx.com, we have many series. This is actually our 12th series, but we have multiple series available in businessx.com where we have done a lot of advisory on how to value your business. And value of business, I will short in uh, do uh, just a revisor on that. Uh, one is performing businesses, how performing businesses, there are multiple tools available, uh, DCF uh, principle and other businesses where you discount the future cash flows of the company and, and get value. The problem happens in non-performing businesses. Non-performing businesses are losing money, right? How do you really value those businesses? So I have particularly a formula which I work uh, quite a bit on that. We call the SAS principle, SAS principle. So we go deep down into a business and understand what is the strategic value in this business. What is the assets available there? A stands for assets. And what is the subscriber base? Between these three things, I would create a certain amount of value uh, for the business. Uh, asset is very simple because you can just calculate asset on, on the depreciated value. But this strategic and subscriber value has to be discovered. And that's the where I think the, the formula of what I call the art and science of uh, valuation really comes in. You know, science is very straightforward. You know, you can pick up numbers, historical data, the assets which were purchased at a certain level, whatever they depreciated, that's easy to do. But these two are, uh, to me, the strategic and the subscriber value needs more, uh, more attention. So that's where uh, we would work. So first step, if you are looking to get into a business, you need to really put somebody who is strong enough to help you to build the right valuation of the business. And, and that's where you need to become done. You need to understand the fair value. And also it is a timing of the industry, timing of the in, uh, market, like today market is down market at this stage the valuations are all down at this stage you're not going to get a high valuation unless until you are in a category which is still positively impacted like say pharma or any other category so there is a there is a positive sign on that otherwise the overall market is down and on that you need to place the industry how the industry is performing and on that place you place an asset but depending on these three things you need to really understand and uh, define this value. So when you're getting into uh, selling a business, you need to really answer a few questions. You know, you need to answer that. When is the time to write trying to sell the business? That's very important. And we'll answer that. I'll, in a later slide, I will try to answer a uh, later uh, discussion. I would like to answer what what is the right time and when do you really want to do that? Uh, while there is no perfect time, but we will talk about that. Uh, so what is the what is one thing which is very strategic? Uh, or attractive to potential buyers or investors. What is one thing in your business model, right? That's very, very clear. They're not multiple things while they are all things that are available, but there's one very compelling thing which is available uh, for a potential buyer, why he would like to do that. It can be market entry, right? You, you are somewhere very strong and you have created your marketplace. I say even a company which has created a very micro cluster entry barrier uh, would have value inherent from that. So say you are a a milk company and in one particular district you were number one and you were strong enough that there is somebody who wants to take your share because you're very strong subscriber base you are absolutely available in that market anybody who buys into you get inroads with that business which is because that already one number one market share is available so find out that one thing which is very compelling in your business model uh, which is very enticing it can be proprietary product it can be market entry it can be team 
sometimes team is very tight. I think it can be some strategic location, some particular asset. Sometimes uh, there is a higher demand in a particular thing. So we have done few transaction where suddenly there was a big demand in a particular category and people wanted to buy new capacities. Say I was industry and I was running this entire thing and I got a big order. Now I have to fulfill this order. I know that if I start up a new factory, a new vertical, my importing machines, getting them here, setting up all that, uh, it would might take me another year or so, or maybe more than that. And I'm getting a factory which is available uh, in the same neighborhood, having the same kind of facilities. There's normally what we call the your competition buys you out, right? So there is somebody you know already who is sitting on a large order can fulfill that uh, with your spare uh, your capacities available. Uh, so that becomes a very clearly, uh, you know, a, a strategic piece. So what is that one reason where you would see that there is a value for somebody to really do that? Uh, what kind of different strategies uh, one has to really deploy? This is the third question. Uh, when you are positioning yourself to your potential buyer, and these buyers can be what I call the national or international, depending on where you are. Uh, so if you, they can be national or domestic buyers, which is largely your competition, or forward uh, integration, backward integration. So we need to really understand that. And there is a lot of international buyers also, which are looking for say, buying you out for a market entry viewpoint. Uh, especially I think in next uh, six to eight months, we'll see a lot of international m and starting in India, because India would find a very important position for that kind of investments. Another area which I always define that you need to define who you really need. You need a strategic investor or a financial investor. Strategic are people who, who have capability to uh, you know, run that business because they come with some kind of strategic value uh, to really uh, bring beyond money, right? So beyond capital, they bring in a lot of their uh, capabilities as a, as a company uh, to run that particular specific business. So, and financial investors are more driven by financial performance of the businesses. They, they normally are, are looking at that thing. So very clearly when I see performing businesses, businesses which are doing well and making money, they seek financial investors most of the times. Uh, because they want to sell it for profit and they want higher valuations and they need 70% uh, of them. I would always say is financial investor. Any few strategic investors would come in, right? Uh, but if it is a non-performing asset, uh, not so performing asset or non-performing asset, uh, it would attract strategic investors. 70% of them say you're a hotel and you're not doing well. You're just doing your nice hotel, very nice place. Facility is good, but you're running on a 30, 40% occupancy level. And uh, a big hotel chain can get you relative value and buy you out because they know with their brand, they can take this to up level. So there is an upside the strategic buyer can really bring in, uh, which is very important. So one has to really clearly understand, are you looking for a strategic or a financial investor? Who are you looking for? And what is the, you know, the business and how do you really present yourself in a very qualified way to both these uh, uh, strategically uh, you know, strategic or financial investor or interested buyers, people who are interested in taking your uh, business, how do you really present that? So these are some of the questions one has to really uh, answer. <clears throat> Before we get into the next level, there are two areas we need to really focus on. Uh, we need to understand the very clear strategic and competitive drivers of our business that we will be able to maximize in the eyes of the investor. When you're presenting to investor, what is our competitive driver? and a strategic driver uh, available for our, our investors to look at it. We also need to really see that <clears throat> uh, how do we really plan this whole framework? Whenever you're reaching an investor, you need to be very clear the time frame you want to give for this transaction. You cannot have open-ended discussions. Set some timelines and then structure and uh, and then do that. Also surround, as I earlier also told, surround by a good team, a team which is negotiating your deal is really, really important. It's very, very important because these are uh, people who have done it. They, they are, they are detached with the business. You know, sometimes when you are attached to the business, uh, you, you don't make right decisions. You don't take right decision either to make a call on the, on the valuation and sometimes because you're emotionally involved or sometimes you take a wrong call on that thing. So both things are wrong. So emotionally, when you're involved too much in the business, you will not be able to do that. So that's why very important that bring somebody along with you who is not emotionally attached to that thing, who's just given a task to really perform and ideally a combination of a, a business uh, uh, team and also a legal team. So it's a combination has to work through. Uh, you can start with the business team, uh, which has business uh, equipment and understanding of taking the entire thing and then forward back to legal and commercial teams, which can do the, uh, the process of uh, uh, handling the entire thing. 
and these are now i'll go down to five things which would make a uh, investor really interested in a business uh, you know and that's something which is very sharp you know and we've seen a lot of other things we talk about a lot of things we study but i think the only five things which i have realized in a lot of discussions a lot of uh, uh, you know discussions with investors uh, this can be st uh, structured funds or it can be even uh, private investors i have really realized that they are only interested in these five things whenever you are giving your pitch to somebody don't go anything outside this you need to really very clearly very sharp uh, present those five things one first thing is always tell about the future don't focus too much on past i have seen people sitting in uh, meetings and pitch decks and when they are selling they want to sell the business they want to tell about the great story how they built the business how the business performed what they did there what they did there thing that's all is good that's yours it's buyer is not getting anything out of that if you if you got award then you got this you got that that's all good very good is all can sit there uh but uh, there has nothing to do with with the new buyer because new buyer buys from the time he wants to buy and he wants to take that so he wants to know what is the future why he should buy this business and next 4 5 6 years how the industry is going to shape what kind of a milestone he can achieve what was missing in the past why he was not able to go to this ramp up growth and and things of that nature rather tell that if i i didn't have technology if i had technology i would move from this to this i didn't have this piece and if i had this piece and this to this so you really focus on the future don't focus on too much of the past past has to me irrelevance right uh, it is only for the financial compliances and other things which people want to really visit your past otherwise they don't want to really look at your business uh, they want to really look at what is the future for this business right that's very very important part of it second which is very important and and this is where i will start with the core it says it, if you really truly want to sell a uh, your business to a strategic buyer uh, and drive a tremendous value the more redundant you are in the business the higher value you can drive now hear it very carefully how do you make yourself as a founder redundant in your own business right the day you are able to do that your business is auto run right and that gets gets the maximum value and this is one of the big problems in indian businesses every business has this founder who is deeply attached and he runs the entire thing and he goes and says look i look after everything i work so far hard and i like the entire thing investors don't like this story investors don't like this story absolutely don't like it. because then they look at the business which is too dependent on the founder or business owner uh, they don't like that story because they feel that the business would not be the same if he sells the business this is a good story when you are raising capital right Uh, as a founder, if I'm raising capital, then it is a good story because they want to lock in the founder, they want to see the commitment of the founder. But when you're selling a business, this is this is wrong story. You know, this is a negative story. Rather, uh, if you even you have to do that. So, if how do you really uh, create a structure where you have already uh, you can be replaced tomorrow? That's the way business has to be designed. If you make yourself redundant in your own business, then your valuation is right, and you will get a top-notch valuation. so this is one of the areas which you don't have to really focus on uh, how do you really do that that's point number 2 point number 3 is predictability businesses which have predictability next one year two year three year four year looks like very clear that this business would come and it will continue to come would become a very strong business and then a uh, fourth point is is there any unlock value which is sitting in your business which you really want to highlight because you not exploited that you had always this business but you were not able to do that maybe the new buyer can clearly say oh why this is this is great uh, this uh, makes a lot of sense uh, like a lot of deals have happened in in uh, you know industries uh, where news would come and say uh, say imami bought jhandu right so when i looked at the uh, piece and i found that jhandu's uh, assets were in lower parel very clearly knowing imami because imami is a very strong real estate play uh, they would have seen that while jhandu is a good asset from a pers uh, you know personal care business view point or their fmcg business view point but this kind of valuation jhandu would have not got they would got the valuation because clearly they've looked at land parcel and that land parcel to me was very very interesting because the kind of land parcel it has over the time they would be able to unlock that land parcel and that can become a large residential commercial development and can get you 3x 4x 5x of that kind of deal so a lot of people sometimes buy into businesses not successfully for the business but there is some kind of unlock uh, value which is sitting there 
and so you really have to see what is is there unlock value which you have in your business which you need to really highlight to your investor and and finally fifth point is they uh, investors love recurring revenues if you have a subscriber business where you have somebody who would continue to buy from you and you can demonstrate that even if it's a small business but it's a small recurring business but they know they can multiply this part of it they like that business so lot of companies get good valuation if they have a recurring business model uh, if you have some kind of a recurring that's why technology companies who work on a saas principle they get a good valuations because they they know that there is a recurring income which is available there so five things always remember future future don't uh, talk about future no past uh, how do you replace the founder that's very modern I mean, how do you make yourself redundant in the business uh, predictability unlock value and fifth is recurring revenue uh, entirely and i can tell you with full authority that almost all businesses ultimately has to exit right so the businesses either would have to close down uh, or they would need to find a new buyer on buy but there would be cycle it can take for some people many decades of running the business some are building businesses and and during that morning i had a call with somebody who is very young but he's already done three exits so some are very tuned now a lot of young entrepreneurs are very tuned that they they know their capabilities they take the business to a certain level and then they find an exit and move on that now let's go visit a uh, timing of the sale when you want to really do that so fundamental businesses run on what i call s curve s curve is uh, you know you go up you come down into valley and then you again go up that's how uh, the business is really done so a lot of people really question themselves what where do you want to do that i want to go on a top and then want to get the best valuation or when i start coming down i'm nervous because the business is going down and and you want to sell that or you started coming up again you want to sell the business really question it's exactly all three uh, you really have to see the mindset of investor in there when you coming down it's actually difficult uh, because when you start showing a positive up upside like a lot of people who were difficulty in covid time are are struggling to do that if you go to a buyer at this stage you not open your business is still shut or is partially open not doing well uh, you not going to get great value but if you are able to pull this up in 2 3 months with consciousness that you want to sell the business and you show a positive curve you will get a buyer a good buyer a good right valuation buyer you will get now also but at that stage you would get value sometime when you peak perform that and and there is no way you look like going up sometimes it's also very difficult because the uh, entrepreneurs are also not able to see the curve up going so you really have to see where is the timing and how do you really want to place yourself uh, you know there is another quote which I, i would say until you make unconscious conscious it would direct your life and you will call it the fate so which means that you need to take a very conscious decision towards your your decision on exit if you're not taking the decision uh with very clear consciousness then they say otherwise it will become you know you will blame it on the fate and say uh well, this happened because that happened and i was not able to a lot of companies would shut businesses now in this covid times uh after this covid times and blame it to covid right that's what is going to happen right uh so if you are consciously working towards really finding a new buyer and understanding and working towards it you might get a buyer you might get a good buyer good valuation sometimes you get even profit out of it Uh, so you need to really make a conscious work uh, effort uh, towards get them the final thing before i close i will rather take two things on piece one you need to really be sure about the uh, ideal outcome what you want from the business you know and i always say that this is what you need to really do that what is your uh, required outcome which uh, which you think and versus of your preferred outcome uh, required outcome is must have you know you need to have minimum of this you cannot go long that's your required and then is your preferred you are in between these two you know and very clearly define that very clearly define what is your uh, either of that very clearly in your business and then uh, take a strong legal business tax advice put the advisor along with you clearly define that your these are your two requirement this is what you require you looking at somebody who has you know this is your minimum requirement this is your required outcome and this is your uh, preferred outcome incentivize them on a preferred outcome incentivize them and say go and do tell this for me and uh, and i will be able to offer you because i want this i am this is my preference uh, but i am not picking up any deal less than that once you are able to set this uh, perspective with professionals they would do the job they would go out and do that because they are incentivized they will always push the preferred one uh, for you and they would also try to get you the best value possibly on that and that's where you will be able to do this so this is my advice on largely on a on a business exit if you're looking to exit a business 
and you're looking to really move out of your business, this can be an opportunity for all of you. I'll probably take uh, bring in Sonali at this stage if she has any questions for me uh, or any questions I see in the. Sure. Thank you so much for another wonderful session, Gaurav sir. It's always a pleasure having you with us. And yes, we do have a few questions lined up with us. So the first question we have is, uh, why would someone buy my business if I'm already incurring losses in it? So good question. Uh, uh, every business has some value you know uh, you know it as i said three three things strategic asset and subscriber uh, out of that three you might have one you, business is not doing well nothing is there you don't have a great location and uh, but you still have assets which you want to sell it off so obviously value you would get is very low but you still can liquidate your assets right uh, sometimes uh, uh, there is balance sheet a lot of people buy businesses then don't take it they take balance sheets i've seen people buying Businesses just to take over the company and the trademark. Uh, I've seen. I mean, they've they've taken nothing. They just taken a trademark. Uh, and a lot of uh, businesses in in Calcutta was sold because they were like a old trademarks which were running there by English uh, East India Company or in that, I think other East India Company itself. Example today, East India Company is actually owned uh, by Mahindra's. A lot of people don't know. So they kept buying the business. They kept buying the stocks from different places. But it's a 400 years of history of the brand. 400 years of trading history, which they used to trade and that. Now it's actually owned by Anand Mahindra. A lot of people don't know. So Anand Mahindra, actually a shell company, it was a dead company, not trading at all for many, many years. And he picked up from somewhere and started buying this older shares and got this entire thing. But look at the history which comes with it. Uh, and uh, this is not very openly available with news with everybody, but East India companies owned by uh, Anand Mahindra. So, so there can be... You know, there is something which is always available in the business and you can really look at that. And uh, and that's where we uh, business X team works with you to really understand what what is there and why you want to do that. Yeah. Wonderfully said, sir. Uh, the next question is, how will I know if I need to keep trying to improve my revenue or if I should decide to exit the business? Is there a specific time? Again, a good question. So you, you cannot detach yourself from business, business you're running. Uh, you need to, as I said, take a conscious call that you want to really sell the business. Rather, I think it takes even more harder effort when you are really working towards selling your business, which means that next four or five months, you need to do a lot of things. You need to set your compliances right. You need to get your business right. You can get your perfect team right. As I said, if you want to make yourself redundant, you need to really put processes, systems, structure so that person who's buying your business can really look at it. And the best time to sell is when you have started the growth curve. And that's the best time, you know, so principle S principle to me is exactly when the growth cycle, when you're just coming out of the valley uh, and you're showing some promise and going up and then diving, that is a time you really have to go out and do that. If you, if you're already in the valley, if you're already at the peak, then maybe you can take a decision at that time. But if you already hit the valley and you start going and diving, then you, unless and you do the valley and you come up and, and do this piece that time, I think that is where a lot of entrepreneurs will lose out, right? They, they don't put the last effort to really bring the business little up and do this piece. And uh, and that's where you need to, that would be time where you will get a buyer. Otherwise, you will not get a buyer. Right. Uh, the next question is from Dr. Lab Singh. He says, what is the DNA you focus as a startup which can ensure your strength throughout till you exit? Again, I'm saying this, uh, uh, the kind of DNA as a startup you want to really show is... Uh, uh, your focus over commitment over the problem solving, what problem you were trying to solve, and you could have a commitment towards that. And this is very clearly defined and stay honest to that problem rather than changing too much and worrying about, uh, you know, economics of the business and startups have this problem. Sometimes when they start with so every startup starts with problem solving, right? They you come with some kind of problem you really want to solve. And quickly they get into the rut of saying, paying checks, bills, this, that, the other, and they want to try to drive the dip, uh, uh, business by survival, right? They so start to do the survival story. And that's where the DNA is broken. And that's why this is able to not do that. So this is a very hard call you need to do. You need to really do a call in terms of uh, uh, defining uh, that you stay honest to the problem solving. If you stay honest to your, that's your DNA. And if you continue to do that, you will get a buyer. You will get somebody to invest on that. The problem with startups is when you become confused and try to do uh, things which are not part of your DNA. And, uh, and that's where uh, a lot of investors don't like the business. Wonderful, sir. So we'll just take up the last question uh, for this session. 
uh, this question, this query actually is from Mr. Ravi Shankar Singh. He says that he's interested to open a new franchise in his area and wants to know about the best franchise option. There is no best franchise in the world. You know, if I know that, I would buy it myself, right? Uh, while I sell most franchises uh, to everybody, but I, I would not be able to pinpoint one franchise which is the best franchise. Uh, it's a what is best for you. You need to discover. So I call it a buying a business is a discovery process, and discovery process should be done on three areas. One, get a lot of information. Uh, come to Franchise India uh, and take a lot of information. A lot of information available today. Also, a show is going on. Then self evaluate yourself, evaluate yourself uh, on the business, evaluate your market and evaluate your brand, which you are shortlisted and then go into negotiation. Do this process uh, and then you will be able to do choose a business. There is no one business which is great. If that was the case, everybody was doing that. Uh, while we all are doing different businesses, everybody has their own idea. Everybody has their own way of doing things. So we are all unique. Businesses are unique. And uh, you need to really discover yourself what is what is right for you and what is right for your market. Wonderful. So uh, I think we'll just wrap up the session here. Thank you so much once again, Gaurav sir, for your valuable time and for sharing your insights uh, with us. Anything you would like to say in the end? No, thank you very much. And I will just uh, put my email ID. If anybody has some interest, reach me uh, or any discussion you want to do on on uh, any of our subjects of our uh, uh, which is franchising, licensing, business sales, uh, resales, which means selling your existing business. Or uh, So these are our subjects. We, we just focused on these three subjects. We are focused on franchising. We are focused on business resales or capital raise. And we focus on licensing. So this is what uh, our company does. Anything which you feel have any interest in these, please reach out to us and we're more than happy to work with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you to all our attendees for your time. We really hope you were able to add some value to your lives through this session. And we'll see you next Saturday at 3 o'clock again for the episode 14 of this uh, Business X Learning Series. The next session will be all about investing in businesses. So we'll, uh, I really hope we'll see you there. Thank you.